Hello, I'm John Sargent and welcome to Argumental, the show where the hottest names in comedy debate the biggest issues facing mankind. Should we scrap the House of Lords? Is capital punishment always wrong? And does a really fruity bottle of Rioja count as one of my five a day? <laughs> Here to argue such burning issues and others like them are our teams. Joining Marcus Brigstock in the red corner, please welcome Sean Hughes. <laughs> and joining Rufus Hound on the blue team tonight, please welcome Rory McGrath. <laughs> OK, we kick off with round one, where we debate a big issue that's preying on all our minds. I'm talking about this subject. Religion, the plate-rattling, incense-wafting, choir-boy-bothering opium of the masses. It's inspired great art, Leonardo's Last Supper, Handel's Messiah, and Dawn French's Vicar of Dibley. With smells, bells, and threats of hell, they've managed more conversions than Johnny Wilkinson. But the issue I want the teams to argue over is this. Religion has had its day. Up first and supporting the statement for the red team, it's Marcus Brigstock. Religion has had its day, of course it has. Ask any young person today what the word church means to them and they will point you to a chubby, drunken Welsh bird married to a rugby player. Of course religion has had its day, ladies and gentlemen. It's over. I'm not talking about personal faith. A person's individual faith is up to them and it's a good thing. I have a personal faith, a belief that the band Pink Floyd is the greatest band ever to have existed. For Rufus, it's Millie Vanilli. You know? <laughs> In India, they have a huge number of gods. I've visited India, and the reason they have so many gods over there, ladies and gentlemen, is because it's very, very easy to get dysentery. Who amongst us hasn't sat on a toilet and prayed as your arsehole looks more and more like the flag of Japan? <laughs> that, that the pain and indignity of that experience will not somehow be removed from you. There was a time when mankind needed God. Of course, there were questions facing us. We needed something to fill in the gap. But now we have science. When I was a child, I sucked on a dummy. Had I been Catholic, it may have been something else in my mouth. It wasn't. <laughs> I don't need that dummy anymore. If I want somebody strangely dressed who's never touched a woman to tell me how to run my life, I'll ask Gok Wan. I don't need a priest. <laughs> Listen, if you're a Catholic, I'm sorry. That's it. <laughs> The Pope. I mean, for God's sake. Not that there is, but, you know. Here's a man who goes to Africa and tells people using condoms will make things worse. What the hell does he know about it? It's like phoning Vanessa Feltz and asking how to make a salad. <laughs> the three major faiths, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, have spent their entire history fighting with each other. Why? There's no reason for it. They all believe in the same God. I like to think of Judaism, Christianity and Islam as the M1, the M6 and the M40. They're all going to Birmingham. <laughs> they will just take whichever route they were nearest to when they began their journey. And I'm not questioning the existence of Birmingham. <laughs> I've been there and very much like heaven, it seems to be where people go when they've died. Instead of spending our time asking God what to do, saying sorry, saying thank you, praying and getting on our knees, what about reaching out to each other? Just hold the hand of the person sitting next to you. Everybody, please. Just hold out. That's it. <laughs> Reach out, everybody, and hold somebody's hand. That's all we need. It's for humanity to come together, and instead of spending... You! Hold his hand! <laughs> well, you can see how people become fundamentalist. <laughs> We hold each other's hands and we leave this studio and instead of advancing on God and begging him for his mercy and his wisdom, why don't we as one, finally, humanity, get together and go to Noel Edmonds' house and tell him he's a twat. <laughs> that is what humanity can do. Religion has had its day. Vote with the red team. Thank you. OK, next up, opposing Marcus, it's Roy McGrath. Thank you. Can I just say, Marcus, in nomine patris et filii et spiritus sancti, as we say in the Roman Church, Marcus est talking testiculos. <laughs> Religion has not had its day. Religion has not had its day. Religion has not had its day. <laughs> 
Are you following this argument? <laughs> <laughs> now, what I want to ask you is, without religion, how would we nourish the human spirit? How would we enrich the soul? How would we fill the existential void that religion fills for us? I'm afraid I think we've had a horrible glimpse into what could replace religion. Twitter! <laughs> or judging by the people who use it, twatter. <laughs> Reality television. That's another new religion, isn't it? Strictly come dancing. I mean, have you seen Strictly? What sort of person? How much... <laughs> how much self-loathing and... <laughs> must you have to appear on that? <laughs> miracles, ladies and gentlemen. Miracles happen to this very day. I mean, a plane crashes in the Hudson and all the people get out un unharmed, walk away. Um, a woman, a single woman, gives birth to nine healthy babies. Ulrika Johnson wins Celebrity Big Brother. <laughs> miracles. Everywhere in this world I see the benign hand of the great creator, the beauty of an eagle in flight the majestic sunrise over the Kalahari Desert, the magnificent curves of Beyoncé's arse. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there is a God. Thank you for coming. Vote Blue. Thank you. Thank you, Rory. Sean and Rufus, anything you'd like to add? Well, um, I obviously agree with Marcus. Religion has had its day, and I can tell this with facts. I was an altar boy when I was a child. And the thing I remember is the priest would always go, he'd say his sermon, he'd go, now we have St Paul's third letter from the Corinthians. Mm. Not once in my two years of being an altar boy did the Corinthians ever write back. No. <laughs> Just rude. Feels like Brigstock spectacularly missed the point here. We would love it if religion had had its day, but unfortunately it still compels people to act out of fear and loathing for either themselves or the God around them. But your argument that religion is all around us it, it, as, as evidence that it hasn't had its day is nonsense. I mean, the vulnerable and the poor and the stupid are exploited all the time, not just by religion, but by Jeremy Kyle, by <laughs> Tricia, by the lottery. And it's not about proving that there's no God. There, there very well may be a God. But religion has had its day. No, we would like for religion to have had its day, and in so wishing for it, let us make it so from this moment <laughs> forth. So you're and saying... so it was decreed, and the letter <laughs> went forth from those at Dave. <laughs> the religion had the had its letter day. from Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> Sup, Corinthians? <laughs> you well? <laughs> But now, Rufus and, and Rory, you're not doing very well in this, are you? I just get the impression that Marcus at least is believing in what he's not believing in. Yeah. You should sort of say religious people are, are rather nice, and they tend to be happier, don't they? Yes. But yeah, wouldn't what's you wrong be, with that? But That's wouldn't good, you it? be happier, John? You've got the option of either facing up to the fact that you've got a beating heart in there and your own nails to make the world a better place, or you can put it all on the invisible man. Well, if you do that, you're a twat. <laughs> Jesus, if you believe in Jesus, came back with one commandment. It's in the Bible. One thing. Be good to each other. That's it. If you say that you're a Christian, your only job is to walk around smiling at people and giving tramps money. <laughs> OK. OK, thank you very much. Thank you all. So, has religion had its day? It's time for our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Hold up your red cards if you agree with Marcus and Sean and the blue ones for Rory and Rufus. Vote now. Ah, oh, my godless followers. Bless your hearts, every last one of you. I'll see you in hell. <laughs> so, that looks like a victory for the red team. Well done, Marcus and Sean. <laughs> Next up is Flip Flop, where we find out how well our comedians can argue with themselves. I'm going to give one member of each team a statement which they must support until they hear this sound. At which point, they must do a U-turn and argue against it. Rufus, you're up first. I'd like you to start off by arguing that you'll never find love on the internet. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are lots of things you can find on the internet. Even the merest type of something like sandwich into Google and you'll be looking at all sorts of images that may imply love. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not love, ladies and gentlemen. Three days I spent in that grotto. That is not love. All I wanted was a sandwich. 
Uh, I say you'll never find love. Of course, it's perfectly possible to find love uh, on the internet. If you sign up with a dating website, all you do is put in all of your personal information. Then they find out through Google Maps now where you live. And then <laughs> they pop some batteries into their night vision goggles. <laughs> and before you know it, there's a very genuine and abiding sense of love following you most places that you go. <laughs> Which seems like a perfectly reasonable defence, but the judge never bought it, and therefore I'm not allowed in Cricklewood anymore. <laughs> but I still go, uh, <laughs> just to, you know, keep a hand in, which was one of the things he told me off for, if I'm honest. <laughs> You will never find love on the internet. What you'll find is a love of things on the internet. People who have started Facebook groups because secretly they have always loved you. <laughs> and we shall have them killed. We shall... Uh, killed with sapphire bullets of pure love. Uh, <laughs> The internet is no place for true love. It's controlled by robots. Robots, as we know, don't have real hearts and real emotions. Uh. Uh, except for uh, R2-D2, who <laughs> was a little shit. <laughs> Thank you, Rufus. Well flip-flopped. The internet has changed the way men look at love, mostly after midnight when the wife's safely in bed. <laughs> Sean, you're up next with a subject that's close to your heart. I'd like you to begin by arguing that Morrissey is a national treasure. <laughs> Off you go. Um, who likes Morrissey? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the thing, the people went, uh, you're outsiders, and Morrissey made it real for us to be long in a group. Morrissey, like, he was, we were there just in our bedrooms, loving nobody, and Morrissey came along and said, I was happy as a tree and a heavenly miserable now. We all went, we found our God. <laughs> we can go out in the streets now and love other people and put flowers down our bombs and have really weird hair. <laughs> it's shit, isn't it? <laughs> Just moaning. He's 50. He's 50 years of age. He's still saying nobody loves me. What sort of a self-pitying idiot is that? <laughs> He's lovely, though, isn't he, Morrissey? Like, <laughs> like a 50 hasn't given up, he still takes his shirt off and goes, ooh, look at me, I'm 50. And people still love him, even though he's been writing the same song all the time. But you know what? It's our song. Morrissey is like a good wine. If you have too much of it, you get very depressed. <laughs> When Morrison came along, it was people like the Wurzels who were in the charts before that. He smashed the Wurzels. Now, I'm a cider drinker. No, we're not cider drinkers. We're just people who, who love Morrissey. But some of us are ashamed to say it, aren't we? <laughs> and that's why I think we should all buy Morrissey's earlier albums, not the new one. It's not very <laughs> Well done, Sean. Morrissey is such a militant vegetarian, he won't open his email in case it's full of spam. <laughs> OK, now it's time for our studio audience to decide who flip-flopped the best. It's red cards for Sean or blue cards for Rufus. Vote now. You people know nothing about Morrissey. <laughs> you know a lot about searching for love on the internet, yeah. though. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, a win for the Blues. Bad luck, Sean, but congratulations to Rufus Hound. <laughs> Join us after the break for more top flight bickering on Argumental. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to Argumental, a show with more hard topics than a Siberian sweet shop. <laughs> This next round focuses on another major cultural issue. We live in an age obsessed by youth, where smooth skin, a healthy body and a fresh face are prized beyond gold. But is that right? And are we ignoring these people? Please welcome an old person. <laughs> Sean, you're up first, and the topic I'd like you to argue is this. Old people deserve more respect. You certainly do, love. Let me get you a chair. You, up. 
sit on his lap. Are you related? Yes. Come on, sit, oh. sit on. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> now, how could you not respect this woman? Old people are just so worthy. You are so beautiful. And it's great to know what my girlfriend's going to be wearing in ten years' time as well. <laughs> yeah, in case you get a bit bored, doesn't wear this. <laughs> I've got her noise there. There you go. I'll unwrap that for you as well. I just want this to be the best day out you've ever had. <laughs> Now, old people, they have their use in society. Who else is John going to have an affair with? <laughs> now, my grandmother, who this lovely woman reminds me of, my grandmother had so much wisdom. When I used to visit my grandmother, I'm sure you all did this as well, your granny would give you some money, you know, a little bit of pocket money, say, thanks for visiting, and you'd always, last year it was 50p, and you'd go, oh, I hope it's a pound this year, I hope it's a pound, and she'd give it to you like that so you couldn't really look at it, and you just feel it going, oh, I can feel an edge. Oh, I think it's still 50 pence. And you look at it, it's 20 pence, and I go, God, I hate that woman. <laughs> And I thought I hated her, but she was so wise, she had such wisdom. She knew the credit crunch was coming years before it actually did. <laughs> and see, the thing, the one main reason why I'd say have respect for old people is they're not going to be here for much longer. So, no, because the thing is like, <laughs> what? I'm not going to kill her or anything. <laughs> but the thing is, we know what happens to old people. Before they die, they shrink. And we should enjoy, like, you go and visit your parents these days, you go, hi, Mum, how are you? Next year is, hi, Mum, how are you? Hi, Mum, where, where's Mum gone? I can't find Mum. <laughs> maybe they don't die, maybe they just disappear. <laughs> I feel we should be starting to sing a duet for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> Love is in the air. Don't know it. She's a lovely person. Respect her, Rufus, OK? If you slag her off one bit during your bit, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Don't rest. Thanks, Sean. Rufus, now it's your turn to oppose the statement and tell us that old people <laughs> do not deserve more respect. <laughs> do you mind standing up just for one moment? No, just very quickly, just quickly. Oh, yeah, I'll hold those. Oh. Oh. Right. Now! <laughs> You may look at the woman next to me and see a sweet old dear who smells of cardigans, sherry and Werther's Originals. <laughs> a heady perfume that reeks of respectability. But smell her through my eyes. <laughs> the beast that stands before you now in a suit of skin three sizes too big <laughs> did not appear here by magic. Benevolent and twinkly like a cross between Gloria Honeyford and Jesus. <laughs> She's the product of a life lived. A life lived at our expense. <laughs> Theirs is a generation so cosseted in laziness that even now, rather than walking to the shops, they're trundling about in shop mobility scooters. <laughs> Lazy. <laughs> Respect, ladies and gentlemen, isn't given, it's earned. Just because you've lived to 80 without doing anything interesting enough to kill you doesn't make you good. <laughs> I was on a bus and some old biddy with no working hips, the face of Gollum and cat food on her breath, <laughs> walks up to me and asks me to give up my seat. I had to say to her, look, love, the only reason you're on this bus is that you've got a pass. And who do you think paid for that? Me. My taxes from the job that I do. So, being as how I've paid for both of our tickets, I'm going to decide who sits down. <laughs> So do me a favour, stand there, hold on tight, and stop crying! <laughs> uh, you young people have got no idea. You don't know what we went through in the war. Oh, I've read about the war. From what I can work out, it was basically an enormous stag do. <laughs> Eyewitnesses report that the end of war celebrations were just a cacophony of young men and women shagging in the street. Well, good for them, but our generation's never going to know the visceral thrill of public sexual celebration, because the worst you got back then was a nasty case of cock rot. These days you'll catch AIDS. <laughs> and where did AIDS come from? Well, no one knows, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> One theory is that 40 years ago, someone <laughs> a monkey. <laughs> Now, do you want to walk around being nice to all old people, knowing that there's a chance that that old fella you just opened the door to had previously enjoyed an erotic yet lethal simian sexual encounter? <laughs> or do you, like me, realise it's old people that have got us into this environmental, financial and sociological mess? And if they had any semblance of self-respect left, they'd make like the Eskimos and take the long mobility scooter ride into oblivion. <laughs> You disgust me. <laughs> Vote blue. Thank you. Thank you, Rufus. And a very big round of applause for our old person. <laughs> Okay, Marcus and Rory, what do you want to add? I realise I've actually met her before, actually, when I was looking for love on the internet. <laughs> I think it's really unfair that old people have a reputation of uh, talking drivel and smelling of piss. I mean, look at me, I'm not that old, and I talk drivel and smell of piss, I think you'll... It's overpowering. <laughs> <laughs> Are you always nice to old people, Sean? Is it what you always are like that? Yes, John, can I do anything for you? No, I mean... <laughs> I'm still reeling from the shock of your of your onslaught <laughs> on that old woman. I literally am staggered by the extent to which you don't care. I sincerely hope that, that when this is broadcast and you venture out into the world, you, sir, are the subject of a severe gumming. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, obviously what you had to say was extremely funny. Well done, but... Um, no, I mean, it's clever to stand there and abuse an old person. Uh, <laughs> and brave, too. Really magnificent. I haven't seen you perform that well since that time we stopped at the, um, what was it, a happy eater, and you pushed all those little kids off the swings. Yeah, fine, <laughs> fine, but answer me this. Who then had a go on the swings? <laughs> Do you like people who read the Daily Mail, Marcus Brigstock? Absolutely not, with the exception of my mother, who I adore. Right. <laughs> and what is the reader profile of people who read the Daily Mail? You. <laughs> Old people read the Daily Mail because they're racist. <laughs> and we let them off it because, all oh, you're old, you don't know any better. A racist is still a racist. So what you're asking us is to respect racism. Get a close-up of that face, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if the BMP are doing a leaflet roundabout now, there is your poster boy for it. <laughs> Well, some people want to move forward, not backwards, Brigstock. Or should I say, hair, Brigstock. <laughs> OK, that's it. Thank you. It's up to our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Red for Sean and blue for Rufus. Vote now. Blue. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> it's close. Well... <laughs> Goodness me, that's a blow, isn't it? That's a win for the blue team. Well done, Rufus. <laughs> You've convinced the audience that old people do not deserve more respect. <laughs> You're quite right. They've had their turn. Now it's time for us kids. <laughs> there are some advantages to being old. For example, if you're planning a trip to Switzerland, you only need to buy a one-way ticket. <laughs> Time now for the final round and a last chance for our teams to show just how argumental they really are. I'm going to show them a series of images. All they have to do is suggest an argument to go with them. OK, here's your first one. That's the argument for why Jerry Halliwell is still single. <laughs> is that not after Wayne Rooney's left a big tip at the brothel? <laughs> quite old, why don't you beat her up? <laughs> I think this is an argument that tobacco companies should be more honest about the effects of smoking. That woman is 16 years old. <laughs> Next picture. That is an argument against letting your flat out to PE students. <laughs> Obviously, we're in a show called uh, Argumental on Dave. It feels quite male, so there's a little joke for the ladies. <clears throat> This is an argument for hovering. 
<laughs> well, sisters. I didn't know you could actually lift that top lid bit up. <laughs> Next picture. That's an argument against do-it-yourself pork scratchings, isn't it? <laughs> this is an argument that he doesn't want to drink all of that, otherwise he'll be going wee, wee, wee all the way home. <laughs> this is a poster for um, an X-rated version of Babe, do you think? <laughs> yeah, the Nigerian <laughs> remake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got an idea for you. We will... <laughs> <laughs> That's right, folks, and it's me and the elderly that are racist. <laughs> Don't do look at me like that, you Aryan freak. <laughs> you know what? This is an argument that the people doing the Get Muslims Drinking poster campaign <laughs> need to seriously rethink. <laughs> They are a faith group, not a race. <laughs> Next picture. I think this is an argument that you should never, ever look in Paul Burrell's attic. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Jimmy Savile's secret bedroom. <laughs> is this the argument against going backstage at London Fashion Week? I think this is an argument that proves once and for all that the um, toe bone's connected to the foot bone, <laughs> the foot bone's connected to the ankle bone, bone the yeah, ankle yeah. bone's connected to the shin bone, the shin bone's connected to the knee bone, the knee bone's connected to the thigh bone, the thigh bone's connected to the hip bone, the hip bone's connected to the back bone, the back bone's connected to the neck bone, the neck bone's connected to the head bone. Now here. So let's just review what's happened in the show. <laughs> Two people have accused each other of being varying degrees of racist, but ended the show going, them bones, them bones, them bones, them bones, them bones, them It's a shame that these are Werther's originals and not minstrels. <laughs> OK, that's it. So, for the final time, it's down to our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Red for Marcus and Sean, and blue for Rufus and Rory. Vote now. I can tell you, the blue team have won the round, which means this week's winners are the blue team. Well done, Rufus Hound and Rory McGrath. Commiserations to Marcus Brigstock and Sean Hughes. That's all we've got time for. Good night. It returns next Tuesday at the same time. And you can carry on the argument at joindave.co.uk by reading exclusive argumental blogs written by Rufus and Marcus. <laughs> <laughs>